Greetings. Good to see you back. As I mentioned before, SAS University Edition will no longer be functional by the end of this month, which is June 2021. Fortunately, there is a replacement for it, and that is SAS On Demand for Academics. Actually, I found SAS On Demand for Academics more versatile, more has more options, more useful basically, for researchers, especially academics and postgraduate students. So let's explore SAS On Demand for Academics, how it works and what's the difference between it and SAS University Edition. Keep in mind that you cannot download SAS University Edition anymore. The only option you have is SAS On Demand for Academics. And this, the beauty of it, you don't need to download it. It's all in the cloud. It's all server-based platform. So let's explore it and see what's going on. Okay, so here we are. I just uh, made a search on SAS University Edition. And so if you click here, it takes you to SAS University Edition, which is, uh, you know, free for, for use by mostly limited uh, version of the larger SAS software. But it has a few options that can be very helpful to you. And you could see still this notice that SAS University Edition is not available anymore for download since April 30, 2021. And the current version actually can be used until August 2nd of this year. So what is the replacement? The replacement is actually SAS On Demand for Academics. And it is also a free access version of SAS. And you can go ahead and start the uh, looking in. So this is basically where um, you will land if you search for SAS University Edition. And the good thing is, bef before um, this, SAS University Edition needs to be downloaded to the computer, to your machine. But now you don't need that anymore. So now you can go ahead and click on Get Start with Started with SAS On Demand for Academics. And it takes you to this page where it shows the difference between them. Uh, for example, it says quick startup because basically you don't need to start a virtual machine to use SAS on demand for academics. You also have cloud access. You don't need to install anything on your computer. It's easy, available everywhere. And it has cloud storage as well. And you can have five gigabytes of data on the cloud. And if you are an indicator, you can get eight gigabytes. So that is very, 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 very um, generous for cloud data, text, basically information. So that's plenty already. And it can be enough for, for all of us. So you don't really need your, your machine or your hard disk. I'm sure most of us will not need unless you deal with big data. Also, there is access to learning. You can uh, use that. And here, if you notice, you can see the difference between SAS University Edition, which is here, SAS University Edition, and SAS On Demand for Academics. And the main difference, besides being on the cloud for SAS On Demand for Academics, is that SAS University Edition has this basic um, software, which is SAS Base, SA, Base SAS, um, SAS Stat, SAS IML, and SAS Access. All of these are available in the current SAS University Edition. But in the new SAS On Demand for Academics, you have a lot more. You have, in addition to those, you have SAS Graph, which I found very useful, SAS ETS, SAS OR, and SAS QC. So basically you have more functionality compared to SAS University Edition, as you can see here. This one runs on your machine. This of course runs in the cloud. You don't need to install anything. Okay, so that is very useful. The only downside is if your internet is down, of course, you cannot use it anymore. Anyways, so what do you need to do to get started? Basically, you need to have to create a SAS profile. And the interesting thing about the profile is that, um, you know, it works across SAS. So that will be for learning and also for use of SAS software itself. You can also register for SAS On Demand for Academic using the same profile here, credentials, basically an email, 
and um, we'll see that now. And then once you receive the confirmation email, you can get the link and you can access Sense On Demand for Academics and you can start using it right away. If you need more information on how to get started, there are a few tutorials that will help you out. Remember, there is always free learning courses. SAS is a very useful software. It can be helpful to actually learn how to use it. And this SAS On Demand for Academics is extremely helpful for those who don't want to buy, who are students, who are researchers, somebody who wanted even to explore SAS on its own. So if you go SAS profile and you start to create your own profile, what basically you need is some basic information about yourself, your institution where you work and also you'll probably be able um, to get your own um, profile you can have um, several languages you know uh, this basic information that you get the interesting thing is here you have to specify a country and a region and the reason being is that uh, to create this profile, you have to specify if you are in North America, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa. This is very important because that gives you access to that particular region. And this is a very interesting way to, to put it. And then once you are done registering your profile, as you see, just basic information, you will, send, you got, you will get an email and then you can register for SAS on demand using your SAS profile. So it's not really complicated. You can easily do this yourself and um, you can log into this page. And I already have my profile. I have my username and I have my password. And basically you can have if you don't have one, you still can go here and you say create a SAS profile. You remember the SAS profile is basically your, uh, your account, just like you are in Google. You have an account for all services of Google, but you have also a Gmail. So this is the same thing. Okay, so you can log in with your SAS on demand for academics. You need to activate it as usual, but this is a simple process that, has, that you can do in any you know with any um, website or any application so this is where we are now so SAS studio is here and you can also have access to SAS using python using SAS pi access to SAS hosted servers using the python applications but we'll be using SAS studio which what we are interested in basically so you just click on that and it gets you started. Remember, if you wanted to start at SAS before, and when it was university edition, for some of you still university edition, you need to start the virtual machine first, and then you wanted to start um, the SAS itself from within the virtual machine. So that's how it was done before. You can run into problems, uh, obviously, if you have if your internet is weak, as in my case, or down, then you can run into issues but if everything is fine you can log in right away to the familiar interface of SAS University Edition actually the interface itself is not very different from SAS University Edition so and actually the process is much quicker especially if you have a great internet connection uh, in, in my case it's not the same thing you know uh, as you can see I have issues with my internet connection and my USB okay so here it is I have already started working on some of the files as you can see it's the same thing basically here what you have here um, for tabs server files and folders and this is where you store your files and folders we used to refer to those in your hard disk we don't do that anymore we basically name the data where the data is and you can easily import data so you can bring in here for example i created for my student um, this uh, folder structure or this folder for all my students actually you can do that for all for yourself for projects for students you can do it here you can do it here and uh, you can see that my student would have um, his files here so it's easy to import a file you can upload a file from wherever you can choose a file from your uh, desktop for example I can choose any file from here um, for example let's say this one so I imported this one very easy very simple and then just upload it here and once you upload it you find it here in order for you to use it actually what you need to do next is you just go and import data you can see that same file 
will be imported with its own structure and of course if you just have to run it and then your data will be already in with all the variables and all the details and you could see it here you can see it here so where is the file now the file now has been imported and if you go into the libraries and I left it here in, at work and import and there you go this is where the file is so the same file now is residing here so every time I want to um, you know like um, write a code on my file then I will refer to it where it belongs which basically it will be for example in this case work import and it's, it's just that you can change this by the way you can rename this to anything you want and so and then every time you refer to it you have to change it here data work for example in this case will be import but i have more than one one folder or one file so i have like color i can change it to anything i wanted uh, this import thing i can change it to color for example and um no, I don't want to delete it. I want just to rename it. So you can rename it anything you want. In my case, I will rename it color. And that renames my data set. So I can easily refer to it here. Data work is color. So this is where the libraries are found. This is where the data is found. Whereas this is where the files that are imported are residing. This is where your five or eight gigabyte of storage would be so here you can store whatever you want then you have all these uh, tasks you can also have a variety of snippets um, for different um, data sets as you can see here different procedures different data sets um, even uh, the help file will have more than one data set that you can use you can have shortcuts here as well for your files so basically that's what you have for me all I need to do is just import the, the data and then create it or import it even um, create a new program and then copy the programs that you have. You can also import it. You can create a new SAS program right here. And what I do basically just copy the, my SAS program right here into the new program. This is the layout. This is where we have the servers, your own servers and files. You can have your snippets here, all the graphs and all the data analysis and everything you are interested in. It's all here. You can have a variety of statistical analysis, linear models, statistics, correlation analysis, anything you like. You have snippets of codes, you have libraries here and libraries are very important because when you import your files, this is where they are. This is where they stay. You can see it here. We just imported this uh, file. So you will need libraries for sure. You will need where to know where your files are. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Like in terms of the code and the structure of the code and all the other SAS usuals like the logs, the results, the same thing. You can also expo export the results the same, like as a HTML or as a PDF file or as a Word. So you can print it too, you can email it and share it and so on. So that is what I wanted to show you right now. But once you are done, leave SAS Studio, sign out. Yes, and you are basically done. Okay, I hope this was really useful overview. Everything else is the same. If you go back to older SAS University Edition tutorials on how to use SAS or how some of the custom codes that are used for GLM and so on are still the same. SAS on demand for academics has more options, graphics, snippets of codes, a variety of statistical analysis that you can do and explore. So I hope you found this um, useful and you will be able to use it. All right. So that's it, basically. That is SAS on demand for academics. I hope you find this video useful and you'll be able to use the software as usual for free. The good thing is older SAS tutorials are still valid. So after this, you can probably watch one or two of them that are applicable to you. And I hope you like this video. If you do, please share it, like it, comment if you have any suggestions or comments for improvement. And don't forget to subscribe.
Thank you for your time and we'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you.